So, welcome to another try and fly. Uh, this time we're looking at a smaller aircraft again. It's a Cirrus SR-22. And the very, very special thing about this aircraft is um, it's actually freeware. You get it uh, from holdmybeer.at and uh, someone has created this fantastic aircraft uh, which as you will see in a moment uh, easily can compete with uh, payware that we have these days um, for aircraft of that type or of that uh, size here so let's have a look at it this is the Cirrus SR22 it's a small um, a small uh, two-seater, no, no, it's actually, well, actually, uh, how many seats do we have in this? Two seats, ah, yeah, and it's a four-seater then. Four or five-seater, ah, I think it looks more like four-seater, yep. Um, and when you start it up, you actually end up uh, with an aircraft that uh, has all the covers on. The thing is, uh, you can't remove them from outside. So what you need to do is uh, you need to get to this, um, s yeah, iPad here to this uh, EFB uh, where you can also change the settings. So let me quickly move away the shields and then we can open the doors and have a closer look at the aircraft without having the cover on. So. Um, this livery, by the way, is a download from the forum because it comes in a darker, a darkish kind of livery, uh, which uh, I personally do not like that much. Uh, I do prefer these here. So I found this uh, red and white, really good looking SR22G T5X uh, Turbo. <laughs> livery with a German registration. We are actually in uh, Friedrichshafen in Germany at the Bodensee and uh, we're going to fly a G8 try and fly round which I haven't done for quite some time. As you can also see we have tie downs, yeah we have covers, uh, protective sort of uh, covers and uh, yeah really nice. All of that, as I say, is freeware and has been designed by um, Mockney. Yep. So, it's still work in progress, by the way. So, uh, I'm expecting to see the, the one or the other uh, update in the next couple of days and weeks. Um, we are currently at version 103 which can be downloaded from the website. Uh, uh, you're going to have the links then in the show notes uh, below. Um, there is one thing with this aircraft that um, is not a problem for me, but some people have experienced rather low frame rates with it. And even I can see that this, the current version of this aircraft is a little bit heavy on the frames. Um, if I take away my 45 FPS uh, restriction, because I kind of restrict uh, the frames in order to keep the the GPU of my 1080 Ti uh, under 90%, so that we don't get problems when I record and stream. Um, and usually simple aircraft such as the Cessna, I actually get the full 45 frames per second, no problem. This aircraft is down to 30 and can drop actually below 30. I've seen frames even as low as 24. So for me that is not a problem because I have a relatively beefy setup here, not the latest not uh, the youngest already a couple of years now old but uh, i'm fine with it i have the performance that i need but with uh, weaker setups 
as of what I know from people I talk to, it can be a bit uh, low. And um, yeah, so I'm I'm hoping that that is just something that will be handled in in the process of getting the aircraft uh, perfect. You know, like, as I say, um, I'm still expecting changes and and updates. I know that Mockney is working on the airplane and uh, I hope that uh, the performance hopefully will go up a little bit so that it is less uh, strenuous on, on weak PCs. Yeah, that is basically the only thing that I can in brackets criticize. This is not really criticizing because as I say for me it is not really a problem but um, yeah, uh, apart from that we do get a fantastic uh, add-on here um, on a level that uh, you wouldn't really expect to get. Um, so here is the aircraft from the inside. Yeah, look at the at the texturing here of the seats. All of that is uh, fantastic for a freeware. Don't forget, this is freeware. This is kind of a a project um, I don't know how many hours he has actually put in yes there are areas that may look a little bit um, yeah not completely finished sort of okay uh, I still think <laughs> this is one of the best uh, freeware items that I have seen in a long time by the way this is the rescue system and it is working I already I already tested it we had a, a German stream here um, I call that Bastelstunde and uh, I already gave the aircraft a bit of a... Uh, so let's quickly check here. Okay, I already gave the aircraft a bit of a spin and it worked out quite well. Oh yeah, I, th I think that's the setting. Um, what you also have is this iPad. You can actually uh, move this so there are two basically two positions where you can move the the iPad um, so if you turn it off it will actually end up down here on the seat um, and then you can click on it and then it gets into position and it has two positions one of them is somewhere over here and I think that uh, I think I did this in the settings yeah so it's a settings menu and I think here you can decide where you want to have your tablet you can see here tablet position right so if you turn right position on it moves to down here uh, that is if you don't want to have the the tablet kind of in your view i personally don't like it down there because it is f for me it's harder to move and and zoom in in order to see things so for me actually the the other tablet position this here is pretty good I prefer it much more, but it's up to you how you want to do it. Let's quickly go through the settings. Um, we have default altimeter setting, HPA or uh, the inch. You can decide, you are in Germany, so I'm sti sticking with the HPA here. Auto disable SSAO. I'm not quite sure what that is. Um, I haven't really um, checked what SSAO may mean. Show tablet on startup. So that this shows up like this, uh, you can turn it on. Otherwise, it would uh, lie down here. All right. Then show commands as tooltip. Um, yeah, I, I I'm not sure what that does exactly. So we're going to see when we. Um, I have it on. I thought it might be a good idea at the beginning when you don't know the aircraft that you use the tooltips. Online network is Watsim, none, override, I'm not sure what override is, um, and Iveo. I guess this has to do with, for example, the way uh, transponder and radios and things like that might work. It's my guess, okay. Um, and because we are not flying online for try and fly, I put this on none and then I would switch it to whatever network I would be using in the future. Show the flight plan in PFD. Um, yeah, not sure what the difference is when you turn this on or off. Uh, the PFD is the, the primary flight display here. 
So we're going to look at that. Fuel always from both tanks. Yeah, that's the option. If you turn this off, uh, then you can actually turn the fuel off uh, into the off position. Now, uh, the Cirrus has two tanks, left and right. And uh, basically, it doesn't have automatic, at least in, in, in reality, I think it doesn't have automatic fuel transfer, uh, like switching. Um, as far as I understand, that's not an option in the real aircraft. So what you normally would need to do is you would need to go and switch between the left and the right tank in order to prevent a fuel imbalance. Because it always takes fuel from one of the tanks. There doesn't seem to be a both position in the SR-22. So normally what I would have to do is I would have to continuously check that, um, that, my, uh, that, that tanks don't get too empty the fuel tanks and switch accordingly since I'm usually forgetting this <laughs> especially in a new aircraft um, I find this option here quite good so I'm going to turn this on again and that means that it will automatically take the same amount of fuel from both tanks and therefore you will keep your fuel balance um, no problem. Rain effects, I think they are lip rain, they are put in. I've seen some funny uh, effects, um, not sure, but in one of the earlier versions, um, there were some interesting screenshots that I've seen. Uh, we're not going to have rain, but it's, it's basically lip rain, and uh, I, I guess you have seen aircraft with, uh, with lip rain on it. Also a great freeware, uh, which produces a drop and, and and rain kind of effects on, on the windscreen. So I definitely keep that on. The meta source, there you have the choice to use the current explain weather as a as a source for the metas for the for the weather. Uh, you can have NOAA, so it would pull it then from the NOAA server, or you can use Active Sky XP. I don't have uh, Active Sky XP and I'm also not uh, um, actually uh, I just realized I have a real weather on in Sim Toolkit Pro, so I'm turning this off now. Which probably means that my weather is now possibly not what I expect it to be. Uh, wind 90 at 29, yeah, right. Um, <laughs> Okay, so um, that's definitely not the kind of weather I would want to have. So let's try and change this. Hopefully now we have a... Um, yep, that's it. So we have the wind calm things. That's the conditions that I normally have in, uh, in try and flies. For those of you that uh, do not understand what try and fly is, I have to repeat this, obviously, because I do get comments um, where people complain that uh, I don't know the aircraft. And um, apart from some people thinking that I talk too much, um, this is try and fly. So I have not studied this aircraft to the last degree. I in the case of the SR-22, I did already have a flight. And so I'm already a little bit more experienced. I'm not completely new to it. But I'm still, um, as you can see, I don't just simply know everything there is to know about this aircraft. And that's just the way it is. Um, I'm going to take this aircraft on a flight, trying to, trying out things. Um, I've already added also some, some changes, such as, for example, the delivery. Um, and I also got a C-list file that we're going to try and see if that is uh, working out uh, already. Uh, Jean-Pierre, Goofy JP, he has created a C-list file for the X-Checklist plugin. And uh, we're going to check this out and see if, if that works nicely. There is a checklist in the Garmin here, but the, the checklists in the Garmin are not exactly practical for me. So I prefer actually the X-Checklist uh, because these are windows that pop up and, and depending on how much optimization um, the designer of the checklist puts in, uh, it helps actually quite a bit in getting things set. So this looks pretty automized, looks actually quite nice. And um, <coughs> Jean-Pierre has obviously used the 
color option of the checklist. Um, quite nice. So we get actually a list of all the interesting uh, numbers and so on. We're going to look at that uh, in a moment. Okay, um, display performance. It seems that you can change the display performance, so I hope I remember, but um, I, I will try and change this and then see if we get some differences. Here we are back with 25 frames, so when I go closer, um, yeah. Hmm. So down here it's not that bad. Now let's uh, let's vamp up this this value and see if that has any discernible effect. Yeah. Hmm. S let's see how far up can I go. I'm to thirty. I'm not sure what this does. But at the moment, we c since we do not have displays, um, I can't really see any difference. So we're going to try this later on when the displays are all uh, up and running. Nose wheel steering. If you do have rudder pedals with brake, uh, with brakes, then you turn this off and you use um, differential braking. That's my understanding. I think the, the real aircraft uses differential braking. Um, if you don't have that or if you're like me, I have synchronized my two brake pedals because um, it is in, in X-Plane and we're go probably going to see this and by the way that just reminds me that um, I'm going to I'm going to calibrate the rudder pedals because uh, I had some difficulties on my first flight. I was, uh, uh, I had really difficulties keeping the aircraft straight during taxi. So often this can have to do with your calibrations. So you should uh, calibrate your rudder pedals if you have some. And uh, let me quickly check. Yeah. I think I'm going to flatten this a little bit. Okay, so if you if you do not have differential braking like me at the moment, leave this on, turn it off if you do have differential brakes because then you would normally tap your left or right brake and that would then uh, steer the aircraft. That's my understanding why this is there. Okay, so that's the settings menu. Uh, you can always get back into the main menu. Now there's a lot of stuff in this in this EFB. There's uh, some gimmicks here from Birdwatch to Pong. Pong. Pong is exactly that. Okay, so you can play Pong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, but let's let's look at, the, at those that are actually um, let's say important for running the the aircraft. Um, there is some interior light. You can turn it on on off here. There's a flashlight, so this in the dark you can actually uh, turn on your interior lights here. Um, there's an Avitab integration, so everything we know about Avitab that's that's that thing in here. Um, there is some weather, so at the moment we have 15 degrees, yep, we have a variable with two knots, NCD QNH 1028, nearest airport, Echo Delta November, yeah, that's probably not the weather that we have here because our pressure is actually 2992 or 1013 millibar, this is uh, coming from NOAA or from some some real world uh, weather source. Um, but we have 15 degrees uh, standard atmosphere basically and uh, temperature is yeah, 15. Winds are no winds. Okay. Let's get back to the weight and balance. The weight and balance uh, serves several purposes. For one, um, you can um, turn on and off things like chocks, covers, tie downs. Um, you can see that, again, this is freeware, yeah. 
This is the kind of stuff you get from payware, things like airfoil apps and so on. He's got it built in here. You can um, bring up and down the, the, the number of people, basically adding weight. And uh, you can also uh, put in petrol. It's uh, up to fuel up to 46 gallons per side. Um, it gives you the gross weight here in kilograms and pounds. And you can actually uh, decide to have full, half or empty. Let's go on half and you can see that uh, that fuel is halved and I guess, I'm not sure if the weight is getting halved. No, I think that's just the fuel. Yeah, it looks like this is just the fuel. Half a tank for the around is more than enough. Um, and it shows that here, total fuel at the moment, uh, we have 46 gallons. And uh, you can see that's 130 kilograms, uh, 287 pounds. So he's calculating everything. It looks like there's also a preheat capability. So for very cold winters, you could actually preheat the engine. And as I say, you can now add um, luggage um, so let's maybe put in one piece of luggage. I had a very strange thing on my very first flight. I had, um, yeah, the, the indication of the fuel did not work. I'm not sure why that was. And very funny thing, as soon as I added um, fuel, the aircraft actually lifted the nose and, and uh, I, I got a tail strike basically. <laughs> That's not happening today. Today, actually, everything looks right here. So I wasn't, I have no idea what that was during my first flight. It's the same version, same aircraft, but today it seems to behave, uh, seems to behave much better. <laughs> okay. So uh, let me quickly check that my joystick, yeah. It's uh, a Logitech that I use. Seems to work fine. Um, but I'm actually thinking of bringing it over on the other side because my throttle levers are on the right side and the joystick is also on the right side, which is difficult because in, under these circumstances, I have difficulties. Um, using the throttle and the joystick because I would theoretically have to do this with the same hand. So I'm just bringing over my joystick now to the left side. And uh, yep, that works. So, so I'm now using it with my left hand. Fine. Very good. So, yeah, basically weight and balance we have done. There's not much more we can do. Then let's go to energy. Um, first of all, this is the kind of aircraft where things wear down, where batteries decharge and where you have to charge them if you have left them for too long. I'm not sure if it simulates uh, the kind of wear and tear and also uh, being being parked somewhere and having the batteries uh, plugged in and that, those kind of things. I'm not sure if, if that is all simulated here, like for example in the airfoil labs. So uh, obviously the battery can discharge because you have this recharge functionality. There's also GPU and they have started to simulate costs. So um, having to do things like uh, doing the maintenance, so if you go on the maintenance page, um, will cost you, for example, ground the ice will cost you $20, refuel anti-ice liquid uh, is uh, $100, refuel the oxygen costs $100, and you can also go into the garage, as they call that, a complete D-check is $18,000. Um, engine oil, um, you can choose between different types of engine oils, I have no idea which I should choose, I have also no idea what's currently in the aircraft, you can change spark plugs, uh, replace the tires, replace the brakes, um, which I think are going to wear down. And I have a feeling that these already, the, the green bar here already, uh, on these first two already went down a bit. Yeah. So there is this uh, maintenance wear and tear kind of simulation here as well, which 
again, freeware, right? Is uh, yeah, it's fantastic to see that. Okay, so um, I think that's basically it. That's that's the interesting stuff. Um, there is a core flight. There are some web pages, uh, FBOs. Um, just play around with it. Uh, I'm not going to cover that uh, in detail. So I would say it's time that we start getting the aircraft uh, moving. Now there is one thing: um, the aircraft is is rather dark, also during the day, and they have tinted the uh, tinted glass. It seems. So that is probably one of the reasons why in here it is pretty much on the dark side. Uh, <laughs> uh, we, we do have really fantastic weather now because I do this in my try and flies. But um, when you have clouds, this can be quite dark in here, even during the day. Um, not sure if that is realistic, but uh, yeah. It's definitely a, a nice uh, cockpit. By the way, there's some beer here. <laughs> Don't drink and fly. <laughs> Here's your key. That uh, to me sounds or looks familiar. Um, I think it's the Aerobusque. No? Is it the Eclipse? Or in, in some of these Aerobusque aircraft, uh, you have exactly the same thing. You get the key from the um, yeah from here. Um, which means that everybody who knows that can take your aircraft and fly away. <laughs> okay, so um, let's go to the checklist. Let's have a quick look through the general data that uh, the guy has put in here. Look at that, really great. So um, oil temperatures, I think that's supposed to be oil temperature because uh, not all temperatures, but Oil grade, all temperature, okay. F the 15W50, 20W50, 20W60, and U, so that's probably French. <laughs> um, the IOW30 are for all temperatures. Above 4 degrees, it's the SAE50, and below 4 degrees, SAE30. In other words, I should probably pick an oil that is more suitable for the conditions I'm flying. So if we are in cold winter below 4 degrees Celsius or 40 Fahrenheit, then uh, we should probably choose SAE 30 or we take the all-purpose oils. Yeah. Uh, now we know why, why we can have a choice here. Very interesting. Service ceiling, it can fly up to 25,000 feet. I wonder though, uh, this is not a pressurized cabin, I'm pretty sure. So, yeah, if you really fly in, in these altitudes, you would definitely have to um, have oxygen on board. There is oxygen on board, <coughs> so it's not a pressurized cabin. It's actually, you would then have uh, this kind of oxygen. Um, yeah, it's not a mask. I think it's these, these things that you stick in your nose. Then um, maximum takeoff altitude 10,000 feet. So you can't take off from airports that are higher than 10,000. In Europe, well, I'm not even sure that we have one that is that high. Uh, aircraft operating speeds, the V never exceed up to 7,500 feet is 205. So we, we shouldn't really exceed 205 knots. The uh, V not exceed um, at 25,000 is 175 indicated knots indicated airspeed. Um, let's see, so maneuvering speed 140 knots at a gross weight of 3,600 pounds. Flaps 50 at 150 knots, flaps 100 as a fully extended knot higher than 110 knots. Then let's see the flaps up 36,000 36, pounds. 30, I don't think, I, yeah, <laughs> I don't think we have 36,000 pounds in this aircraft. Um, yeah, 
I, I guess it should be 3,600. <laughs> it is a little bit, um, hang on. So what's our current weight? Our current weight is, uh, gross weight is 12, is 2,833. The maximum takeoff weight is 36. So this is, um, yeah, there's a, there's a bit too much zeros here, I think. I'm guessing, but uh, yeah. S okay. Rotation speed, 80 knots. So we rotate, we will rotate um, at 80 knots. The best angle of climb uh, we get with 88 knots then, and the best rate of climb we get with 103 knots. And cruise climb would be at 120 knots indicated. Landing speed uh, flaps up to 90.95, then flaps 50%. We shouldn't be higher than 90. 85 and 90 and flaps 100 percent somewhere between 80 and 85 knots that's good to know so let's go through the to the setup here cold and dark initial situation chocks covers uh, yeah okay that's uh, we've already taken them away um we've already closed the doors uh, we have refueled uh, weight and balance external power so it wants us to connect the external power. Connecting the external power costs money, by the way. Okay, so I'm going to do it now anyway, but uh, that will actually cost you, I think it's $50 or something. Ding, ding. And then you see here a boot up screen. That's amazing. <laughs> uh, um, so uh, it's a bit hard to read this checklist. So let's um, move it here. So interior light as required. Um, so yeah, let's see what kind of interior lights do we have. Um, that's th that's something else. Windshield wipers, instrument. I think that's the instrument lights. Okay. And then I think I think we have lights up here. Oh yeah, these are lights that you can turn on. We have to check what they look like in the dark. And then you can already see the Garmin here. Now, I don't think it is possible to extend these. So uh, these are fixed in here. There is uh, no um, pop-up windows for the, for the Garmin's, unlike uh, the normal uh, Garmin from Lamina. Now, this, as far as I understand, is, is based on the Lamina Garmin, but uh, it has been modified and extended um, to be used with, uh, with this aircraft. And because we are still in the kind of uh, low power mode, um, we have the engine uh, indications here. So we can see the RPM. Um, this time the fuel stuff actually works, so we can see that we are at around 26 gallons in each tank. Um, gallons used so far, 41. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure how it calculated that one, because I'm pretty sure I didn't use 41 on my last flight. That can probably be reset. We will have to find how, that, how to do that. There are some uh, indications like oil pressure is low, avionics is still off, the RPM is low, yeah, obviously, because <laughs> the engine isn't working yet. And uh, here we have the normal sort of e EHSI stuff, PFD stuff. Yeah, so it wants us to turn on the avionics master. We're going to do that. What happens then is uh, we get an inset here with a navigation map and the other display, the multi-function display or navigation display, whatever you want to call it, um, is firing up. Uh, you can see the um, Lamina Garmin uh, genetics here. <laughs> um, but again, this is completely changed and you cannot, um, you cannot bring it out. It's not possible. At least I haven't found a way to do that. So, um, now, here comes, here comes the bit which um, is difficult. Because you cannot pop this out, uh, it's not possible to uh, use the 
the Garmin as you would do it with, let's say, the, the Lamina Cessna or, or any airplane that uses the default Lamina Garmin stuff. So, they, um, so you, you will have to uh, kind of place yourself uh, like this. It's possible so that you have the keyboard and, and the knobs um, and then you have to try and, and kind of get your, get your navigation set up here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into flight plan mode. Echo Delta November Yankee is already in there. That's our airport. I press on the proc and um, and then you, this is the FMS button inner and outer and this is extremely fiddly. So um, I haven't yet got the chance to connect some hardware, but um, yeah, it, is, it can be a bit of a pain. <laughs> Enter, select departure. Our departure will be the Mocorp 3 Whiskey departure. And by the way, I have um, I have SimTurkit Pro running here, and uh, I just realized that it doesn't show the flight plan. Mm -hmm. Let's go to flight planning. Oh yeah, here we can see it. So we're going to leave um, Friedrichshafen on runway 24, flying the Mokop uh, departure to Mokop. That's the three whiskey. Um, and then I'm going to go direct to the CI-24. And then we're doing the approach via the ETREM um, ILS 2.4 um, back in Friedrichshafen. So that's what I set up here. And yeah, I haven't edited anything. Okay, and now, by the way, watch this. I just discovered it um, when I was zooming in. It's suddenly switched mode. And then we get into this thing, which is kind of a 3D, and now. Um, how did I do that? Um, how did I do that? Uh, yeah, you can. Yeah, it's a 3D representation of the airport. So it probably pulls this stuff from the scenery and it builds this, this 3D representation of the airport, including the taxi, taxi lines, which don't seem to have um names yeah so in this in the scenery it seems they don't have a taxi network so we can see the the taxi lines but we cannot see what taxi what they actually are let's see if my airport navigator is uh, working here view the map no so that's usually a sign that there is no taxi network and that's why airport navigator and also this won't show you the taxiway names but this is something new in, in Sim Toolkit Pro that I just realized um, today is already in. Um, and that is the kind of 3D view of, of the airport. Absolutely fantastic. Yeah. I'm using Sim Toolkit Pro now for a lot of things these days. Okay, so let's uh, go back. So basically we need Mocop 3 Whiskey and yeah again it's um it's not easy uh, to use the mouse on this there's probably uh, some commands that i could put on on keys or something i haven't done that yet so moco 3 whiskey uh, should it load it yes please and now we have here our mocop and uh and then I'm going to um, go back to procedure and I'm going to select the approach. I leave out the arrival and I'm going to use the um, set for Athens. I don't think we want to fly to Athens. That might be a little bit far away. <laughs> um, so let's see, we need to no, 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 no,
flight plan. Um, I'm not sure why it wants to go to Athens with us. <laughs> that is a little bit too far. Um, see if I have to enter. Echo Delta November Yankee. Enter. Append EDD into flight plan. Insert after active waypoint. Append. So let's do an append. Right. Now let's see what happens when we go to procedure. Now it knows that it's EDNY. So hopefully we're not going to see Athens again. <laughs> there we go. So we're going to use the oops ILS24. Enter. And we come via the MOCOP as the initial approach fix. That's what I also set, have set up. Uh, yeah, here we go. MOCOP. And uh, yeah, you can see how that looks. Okay, so this, is this, this looks good actually. Um, enter and load. So that should... Um, uh, yeah, there we can see it. This is now our flight. We are going to fly here, then here, go to Mokop, then come here, come here, land, hopefully. And this is the missed approach procedure, which returns to Mokop, should we have to go around. And that finishes our flight plan. Um, yo. So we're supposed to turn the avionics off again. What would that mean? Um, file the flight plan. No, no, let, let's leave this on. I don't want to start entering this again, <laughs> if I can avoid it. Okay, so it wants all switches off. Mm. Okay, let's see what happens. Uh, please, please still have the flight plan, please. Thank you. Okay, all switches off. Parking brake is engaged. Okay, flaps full up, then throttle lever idle. Hmm. Okay. Uh, mixture lever is lean, yeah. Fuel tank selector is... Uh, is off yeah it, it, when you have this automatic mode um, things are a little bit weird when it comes to that fuel quantity we have checked and next is the engine start for the engine start we have the parking brake engaged the battery masters we're going to turn both on and then the strobe lights we're going to turn them on there's no beacon they only have the strobe here um, the power lever fully forward and mixture full rich fuel tank selector left okay i mean we leave that to the the automatic magnetos key insert we have done that already external power disconnect uh -huh. so we should disconnect now the external power so turn it off okay Then the power lever open one quarter inch. Power lever open one quarter inch. Uh, fuel pump um, wants it on boost. Let's see where that is. Pump back up. So where's the fuel pump here? Oxygen flaps. Um, hello fuel pump where are you fuel pump boost that's uh, hmm, that's not the pump uh, by the way that's our oxygen here I'm not sure what you can do with this <laughs> How you would use this. Uh, by the way, all our 
uh, th these do work, right? The circuit breakers. So you shouldn't have any red circuit breaker. So what is that down here? So where's the fuel pump? Where is the fuel pump? Is it here somewhere? No. We only have beer. <laughs> beer here. So, um, yeah. Um, the only thing that looks like pump is is this thing. So let's see. Is that the fuel pump? Nope. That's ice protection. That's windshield uh, protection. Pito heat. Uh, yeah. Uh huh. Oh, that's that. Nice. So that's to fly north. Uh huh. That's probably the um, what you call that. Uh, magnetic compass they might they might have some uh, a slight uh yeah where's the fuel pump i can't find the fuel pumps i mean there are not that many switches here it must be well hidden somewhere ah here 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 i found it <sighs> fuel pump boost magneto start so the magneto is here so i put this so oil pressure is in the green that's fine and bolt generators or alternators I'm turning them on now and I set the power lever to be at 1000 rpm roughly about a thousand the mixture lean a bit so that we don't get fouling plugs or something like that uh, the fuel pump now we can turn off avionics power switch uh, can be turned on which means that we should get back um, the Garmin and I sincerely hope we still have everything so here we go there's our flight plan it's still there um, now let's go into the flight plan I think we need to yeah we need to uh, no 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 no, no, no. Uh, voila. Okay. Um, I'm going to. How do you activate that one? How oh, does that work? Enter? No. Um, direct to? Enter. So that we act, we have to activate the first leg because uh, I remember that uh, I get difficulties if I don't do that. The, the way it was, it would not automatically uh, pick up the next one. So this is our first waypoint, and that should now be activated, and it should now be able to fly that. Yeah. By the way, um, you have the systems here. This didn't show up yesterday either. So I think there was something a bit fishy. Not sure why. Uh, today everything seems to work fine. It's great. We, do we have a camera here? An outside camera. Unbelievable. Yeah, EVS. Then you can um, put in topo, airways, um, low, high. Um, yeah, so the usual stuff, the traffic obviously and you can't go back as I say the system is also fuel so you see fuel level and I'm 
not sure what this stuff does. EIS engine. Ah, that brings it back. Okay. And here we see, I think this is the temperatures. This is the uh, cylinder temperature or something like that. Yeah, everything looking fine here. You can you can declutter things. There is a checklist, as I said, but um, I personally don't like it um, to use it because I find this uh, sealess stuff much, much, much better. Right, engine electric parameters a monitor. Yeah, we've done that, and before taxiing, so we are now ready to go. Instrument and panel brightness. Um, yeah, we have adjusted that. Now let's turn on the NAV light, which is here. Transponder. Um, yeah, let's go to the transponder page and uh, we use code 7000. Um, we're not going to turn it on yet. Heading back uh, set to runway. Yeah, I think it's already there. Altimeter uh, Q&H is uh, 29995 or 10... 29992 or 1013, yep, that's fine. Um, the flight plan is already in there. Flight director, the flight director it needs us to turn on the flight director, which is here. Flight director is on. The autopilot is pre-configured, yep, that, um, we're going to use heading mode initially. Then all trim and elevator neutral. Um, all trim and elevator neutral. Where would I see that? And actually, um, I might have to see. Go to safe cockpit. Um, yeah, I need. I need to. I need to change this here because I, I need the trim. Trim, uh, pitch trim down. And pitch trim up, pitch trim up. So, yeah, there is, by the way, there's this coordinate stuff here. That seems to be some debug th things. Um, they show up from time to time sure what that does so where can i see where my trim is is, uh, is that visible here somewhere hmm. by the way you can add a little bit of uh, heating and so on well i can't really see it so, yeah, new aircraft, you know, we see it here, no, so I have no idea where my trim, where my trim is at the moment. Well, let's assume that's okay, flaps uh, full up, yep, it's in cabin heat defrost, have a fuel tank selector is automatic, we don't need to worry about that. So we request taxiing and we release the parking brake and then we start. And then we can start. Uh, park brake off. Okay. So let's do a quick brake test. Yep, brakes are working. Turn to test HSI. Yep, HSI is working. You can see that it is turning here, showing us the direction. You can compare it with the magnetic compass up here and see that they are in line basically. So 
got a couple of views set up. Yeah, not that many yet, but um, the ones that I need. It looks like, um, at the moment, it looks like my calibration of the rudder has actually fixed the problem. So it definitely is a good idea to calibrate your rudder pedals if you have them for taxi. feeling that the cockpit is much brighter today um, there must have been something wrong yesterday because I had some weird things um, with the with the avionics and and it was really dark in the cockpit and today this is it is actually a good bit different this this actually is quite nice now the, the way it is you can actually see things I had a, a completely black it was uh, extremely dark, so you couldn't really see much of the surrounding cockpit. Not sure why that was. Yeah, Friedrichshafen. There is a museum. Still have to find out where I can see what my trim level is. Let's see, where could that be? Let's uh, let's turn off the inset. We can see the waypoints, and these are the nearest waypoints. Oh, by the way, uh, because it is not exactly easy to change heading and altitude on the autopilot and uh, let's say the vertical speed um, they have put this thing here which allows you to change your heading back your altitude and your vertical speed up and down um, and uh, that means you can change the most important parameters so we're at about 2930 frames I mean, the, the scenery here is also demanding, but uh, definitely this airplane uses up frames, yeah. It's, uh, with other aircraft, I can actually get uh, at least 40 here. But then again, look at the complexity, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's not really a surprise because we have really complex uh, Garmin systems here. The, these are extended. They, they kind of took the, the laminar stuff and, and made it more realistic. There's even some 3D things showing up here. Um, I haven't yet figured it out uh, completely, but um, this is absolutely amazing because this looks like the, uh, what you call that uh, view thing? Um, it's it's kind of free. 3D stuff that's theoretically possible here. Um, it's just that I haven't yet figured it out. <laughs> um, so let's see. So let's, let's quickly align the heading. Yeah. Um, CDI wise, yeah, we are on the GPS. So as soon as we change the autopilot mode to NAV, it should pick up our course and then follow follow the course line all right right mixture full rich uh, fuel pump um, we put into boost mode again or so or maybe 
now. <laughs> Power lever uh, to 1700 RPM. That's why I like these, these checklists. It's, um, it helps me a lot. So I'm moving the throttle lever forward. 700 RPM. Ah, yeah, it's still a bit touchy here with the... Ah, no, 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 that would have been the test. Oh, no. I didn't read the checklist properly. Too late now. We're not going to do the test. We're going to rotate at 80 knots. Trimming to get used to it first. So, trimming the aircraft. And um, yeah, that was a bit stupid now at the holding point. Before takeoff. Yeah, <laughs> okay. Takeoff. After takeoff. Good. Okay, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to activate um, nav mode, I'm going to activate the autopilot and I'm going to activate vertical speed mode. So, which I'm going to reduce the sound of the aircraft a bit. There is a certain repetitiveness in the engine sound. Yeah. Which I can hear. Um, I wonder what altitude. Yeah, I think 10,000. Yeah, we wanted to go to 10,000. The sound is definitely 3D sound, quite extremely. You can hear it left and right ear. I have a headset on and uh, yeah. So we have 80% power. I'm guessing, uh, let's see what it, what it would have told us for the Yeah, automatic checklist. <laughs> Let's see, takeoff checklist. Normally what we would have done is, um, yeah, we rotated at 80. Initial climb speed 90. We are now at 100 and something. And I would have, um, uh, it doesn't really say where we should have put the power. Full power, okay. I did, I did use bit less than full power so we're now in the in the climb following our flight plan I don't think I will go for five thousand uh, for um, 10,000 let's stop at 5,000 because we need to get down again alt s 5,000 GPS Autopilot, jaw dumper, they're all on. Yep. And we're now getting a bit faster. So we're getting into cruise modes. Uh, we never exceed 205. Yeah, sure. Power at uh, 55 to 88 percent. So I'm going to put it on something like 60 percent or 65. Let's do this roughly 65% and see where that brings us speed-wise. Um, power lever adjust, yeah, mixture, CEGT. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I'm trying to optimize the the EGT. Not sure how I should optimize it. We need to make ensure that the temperature is not getting up too much. Okay, I'm guessing that that's okay at the moment. Fuel pump uh, off. I can turn the fuel pump off now. Is it off? I don't know. Yeah, it is. Circuit breakers all pushed. Cabin heat defrost as required. So... Oh yeah, we do have a little... A little problem again with this waypoint. Yeah, that's probably me having messed up a little bit on the uh -uh. clear enter. Okay, then direct to Mocop. Okay, 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 okay. Almost, it almost messed up. So now let's see. Will it activate it? Mm, nope. Um, no. No. Oh, this is this is not exactly where I wanted it to be. <laughs> oh. So let's activate this one here okay flight plan uh, yeah I think that should probably be it okay that brought us to 151 mm -hmm. current power setting um, above 10,000 we are not engine and electrical parameters okay next would be then the descent yeah by the way uh, the sound is quite loud if you put on the headset it suddenly becomes very quiet But you can still hear that repetitive engine sound. Yeah. Mm. Oh, that did not work. I, 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 I think we might have jumped out of nav mode. Yeah, we did. I, I didn't realize that. I didn't see that. the Avitab map yeah we can see we need to we need to get here that's where we're heading for and now we have this square uh -huh. I'm not quite sure what that square is exactly I'm not that experienced with the garments. 
Yeah, and, and we do have these kind of debug outputs here. I'm not sure if you can turn this off. Maybe, maybe there's an option to have this on or off, but it looks to me this looks like developer stuff also here. Yeah. So, we're finally back on the course line. I did that actually quite well. <laughs> um, Eyeless frequency, um, yeah. Let's go to the map and let's find the airport. There it is. Let's click here and let's tune nav one on one 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 decimal nine with um, the course of two three seven. So let's uh, actually synchronize the heading. I haven't done that either. See what kind of fuel flow do we have? Um, 17.2, it's in the green band for the fuel flow. Yeah, okay. On the lower end of the green area. Probably need and probably need a view for the for the path here. So let's go to the AVI tab um, and then select Echo Delta November Yankee and then let's vertical get track. Vertical track. Okay, it probably wants us to go down or something. Could be approach ILS uh, localizer runway to four. Where do we need to be? We need to be at four thousand feet. So. Uh, I'm going to bring us now down to 4,000 by using vertical speed mode and then go down with about 500 or so. I'm going to reduce the power. Okay. So I'm going to switch now to heading mode. Then I'm switching the CDI to localizer one and I'm arming the approach mode. Localizer is armed, glide slope is armed. And I wonder if I need to get further down. Let's see. Etrem, we have a, we are not yet at Etrem, but Etrem we should be at 4,000. So hopefully, uh -huh, localizer is in. If if this is the glide slope, we are far too high. Okay, that would mean we need to come down further. Yeah, we are above the glide slope. So that did not work out. Um, and it, that means it will not capture it. That means I need to do that myself. Uh, autopilot off. And down we go. Yeah, okay. I mean, that's just what happens. I got this a bit wrong with the altitude. 
that's just the way it is, low RPM. So let's uh, try and... Okay, there we go. We're on the glide slope again and now we need to really slow down. So that we can extend the flaps. Um, did I, yeah, flaps first position. Flaps second position. And I think I need to stay around 90 or something. It's probably a bit early. I think I got slow a little bit early now. It goes quite quick. Um, it loses the speed very quickly. Yeah, but these are all things you get used to. Okay, so let's go and see. Before landing, mixture full rich. Yeah, fuel pump uh, we need to put on again. Cabin heat defrost as required. Landing lights um, on. Okay, flaps 50%. Uh, uh, we are already beyond that. And then the actual landing, somewhere between 80 and 85. Okay. Mixture full rich, landing light is on, parking brake, check release, flaps full down, yep, autopilot is disengaged. And uh, yeah, and then land and touchdown. Yeah, yeah, I'll try. Yeah, I need to get used now to the. So we're a little bit below the glide slope. It is quite direct with the input, so I'm, I'm using the joystick very little. I'm trying to get used to it, that's why I'm shaking a bit, but um, just want to see. Yeah, it is kind of sensitive, but it's not too bad. It's 82, I need to be careful. And I'm using the trim as well. Still haven't found where, where the trim indicator is. <laughs> so, okay, and taking away the power and let it, and let it come down. Come on, come on. Yeah, this is a long landing now, but, uh, okay. So that was, uh, relatively easy. I should have probably started a bit earlier. Okay, we're a bit low on the oil temperature, so I need to provide a bit of power. So it needs to be around 1000 RPM. So now. Okay. Yeah, very nice. So let's, um, whoops, yeah. Okay. Good, um, let's quickly go through the after landing check. So power around uh, 1000 RPM. I'm on the brakes now so that we don't roll. Flaps fully up. And, and then we continue to the parking position. Landing light we can probably turn off as well. Although there's no taxi light, so I suppose in the dark we would need, we would leave the landing light probably on until position.
Yeah, I should have probably rolled on uh, one exit further. Ah, very nice. Oh, this is this is really good. This is really really good. We need to then see how much fuel I've used on this. Yeah, or I could have gone right instead of left. Uh, I don't know. Doesn't matter. Where are we actually? Oh, we are in this in the back part of it. Okay, I actually went too far. <laughs> it doesn't matter. I'm I'm just going to park here somewhere. Doesn't matter. I don't think I'm supposed to be in this in this end. break and uh, yeah let's quickly go through this here so headset remove to be honest I don't even know how I remove the headset <laughs> where is it um, I can put mine off but um, ah you click here and on the seat uh, you know the time then you lean the mixture, you put the transponder on standby. And the landing light off. Uh, uh, landing light off, uh, pitot heat off. We didn't put on the pitot heat either. <laughs> the fuel pump put into the off position flight director off. And all trims and elevator neutral. Yeah, if I would know where I can see that, I have to find out where that is. I'm pretty sure there is an indicator. I just haven't seen it yet. Um, park brake uh, release, go parking, set park brake set, and then shut down. Power lever 1200 RPM. Gloves are up, mixture cut off. Okay, power lever idle. Magnetos off. Then both alternators off. Instrument and panel brightness dim. Carbon heat defrost minimum. Interior lights all off. All switches off. Magnetos key remove. I'm not sure how you do that. Probably you open this here and click here or something. Hmm. Let's see. How do you do that? How do you get it off? I can't tell you. Um, there's probably a trick for that. To bring it in here. Naja, doesn't matter. Remove. Okay, that's it. We have arrived successfully without uh, wrecking the plane. Which I guess is good. <laughs> um, yeah, the Hold My Beer SR22. You see what I mean? It can be quite dark in this cockpit um, due to the shadows. I'm not sure if that's also my settings. Um, but outside you can see uh, lovely, lovely aircraft. Really nice. And uh, yeah, definitely something that you should get yourself. Uh, it's for free and it makes a lot of fun. Um, just check out uh, there's a discord channel you can see that all on the web page um, and there you can see what Mockney is, is doing you can also get support um, and you can see what the current releases are so if uh, if they 
put out another version, uh, you usually can see this on Discord um, if, you, if you want to be there. Right, that's it. Thanks very much for watching and uh, until next time. Bye.